In today's video, I'll create a print-on-demand product and then walk you through the whole process. I'll go over every single step from research to design to which mockups to use, the offer itself, publishing it on Etsy, and then finally how to achieve rank with the listing itself. Let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Andreas. I've done over a million dollars in revenue on Etsy as a print-on-demand seller from Sweden. All right, so the first thing is always gonna have to be research. I talk about this so much on the channel, but research is what we always got to base things out of. I've talked so much about sweatshirts, so we'll talk about it some more as it's the colder months and it sells super well during this time. So here I've just searched for sweatshirts, albeit it's quite uh, misspelled, but sweatshirt basically. And since I live in Sweden, this can auto auto like uh, fail to ship to, the, to Sweden. So I always got to make sure that I ship to the US since that's my target market and then fiscal items in the filters and then star seller in the filter. Swap out star for best here in the search bar to only get the best sellers for a given niche. The first thing that we, that we want to do overall, find five to 10 shops that we want to be like and then download their backend data. I go through the nitty gritty of that in this video right here. I won't do that here, but this basically gives us a master list of five to 10 shops that we want to be like, and we can then just go through their top sellers one by one and add value to each specific niche. So that's the first step of the research. Once we have that, we got to actually find which type of designs are actually selling well. By just searching for sweatshirt here, filtering by bestseller, we can already see a lot of common denominators because you see here that the college type uh, listing were, is super popular. So there, there, there. Mm -mm -mm, there we can also see it here and here too this is a halloween version of it this one here too is a christmas version of it this one here too this one here too so what we want here to basically is to get a best selling elements list and we will then write up the that the college font does super well now we want to have more elements so we can combine them and to create something new to the niches itself so we can add value to the platform. That's how we actually add value to the platform by combining elements that are working super well on their own, combining them in new ways to create something new. We can also see that the cursive here is doing very well. Cursive here, cursive here, 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 cursive here, cursive here, cursive here. So yeah, cursive there, cursive there. So lots of cursive too. Specifically this year, this is like the cursive and the uh, college font does super well. So we'll write those up. Just for reference, I, if you if you haven't watched my channel, this might be new to you. But if you haven't watched my channel, I know this basically is the two fonts that I talk the most about. But that's because they are so popular, especially this specific year in 2024. Okay, so in a perfect world, we would basically want more elements than this. So maybe like five to ten. But we'll start off with this for the video's sake. So now we go to Canva, we create a design, a 4,500 by 5,400 design. And those are, the, those are the dimensions that Amazon uses. So we'll use this for Etsy too. Now we have our design here. Now we gotta get to go to create a Fabrica to get our fonts and our elements and stuff. This is my little library that I, I, I've always used to get all my, all my graphics and all my fonts and stuff like that. There's a link in the description if you, want, if you want to use that. Anyhow, so we need a college font. Uh, the second pointer one is great. So we'll use that one. I have I've already downloaded this one, so I will be basically not download it, download it again. Then we need a cursive font. Let's take this boho one. Now we go to our design here. I press T to get a text element. And then we, we got we have to have Canva Pro for this. But then we basically just upload our designs. Then we basically upload our font. There we go. Now we have a cursive font. Then we the other one was called second pointed. So we'll just search for that in our font library here. Since I already had it. There we go. Now, what we basically do is that we got we will combine these two elements to create something new to the niches itself. I have my master list here and I've picked out a couple here from this specific master list and we want to add value to this specific niches with our own designs. So let's take this one coffee weather sweatshirt here. 
Mm-hmm. We sort we use Everbee here to, to sort this. Again, there's a link in the description for Everbee as well if you want to use that too. It's the main program, or basically it's the program that I've used to get to where I am today. It's helped me a lot. So so my thinking here is that since there are already one listing here that has the, the college and the cursive font, it might not be super good to just hop in with our own version of it, but there's a caveat to it. Uh, we want, we don't like want to compete with already established listings. So if we just sort this by bestsellers instead, let's see if we can find any like this. Before we do anything, we gotta search for trademarks. I always use uh, flying research for this. It's the easiest way to like check for trademarks. Yep, there's no trademarks for it. So let's do it like this. Coffee weather. All we then can do, yeah, I think this also is a lot more suitable. Okay, let's just keep it simple. All these have like these curved ones. We can do that too, but we want to stand out in the niche itself. So we can just keep it simple and just do it like this. Coffee weather. Because again, in my experience, the simpler things are, usually the better they are. The more complex something is, it's usually harder for someone else to grasp something. So let's download this. And then we also want a off-white version. We always want to make sure that we use an off-white and not a full, like a real white. Because if we use this specific color here, the FFFFFF, all the Fs, when the design itself is printed on a black, on like a dark garment, they don't print an underbase in those cases, which basically means that it looks a bit more faded. But if you use an off-white like this, that means that they will have to print the underbase, under base, which is FFFFF, and then put this specific design, the off-white design on top of it, this will make the whole like design look crisper on a dark garment. So always use off-whites if, if you're gonna print on dark garments, in my opinion. Okay, so now we have the design itself. And now we head into the mock-ups and the offer. A huge thing, because if, you, if we see here basically, a huge thing to actually sell on Etsy is the mock-up itself that we're displaying the design on. So if we just, for instance, do go broader here, go to for sweatshirts, swap out star for best. If this main image here that you see in search is one of the absolute main variables to actually get sales. It's so, so, so important. Again, what I always do here is base it off of data as I don't want to have used my own subjective opinions. But what we can see here is that the sand, this specific sand mockup, this, 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 this is all on, this is like the same picture over and over and over again. It's just different sellers putting their own designs on top of the same image and then just selling it. What we wanna do then is that we wanna search for the Gildan 18,000 mockup sand. And there it is. So this would be our main thumbnail. Now, what's important to know is that we can't just display it like this and then get sales. We need something more in the listing too. There are two parts. If you're new to the platform, I would strongly suggest you just get two more things. And that's a size chart. So that's the other thing that we wanna use. And the best part about this is that we can just find it right off of Etsy. So just still get an 18,000 size chart. And we can just buy one of these and display it like the sizing of it uh, easily within our listings by just purchasing a, a size chart right off of Etsy. But another crucial thing is, is to display our offer using our images. The main thing in our offer, if we're new here, is that we actually gotta use a guarantee. What a guarantee does is that it offsets a risk from the customer and puts it back on us, the sellers. So we can just say if there's, a, for any reason, if you're unhappy with the purchase for any reason, you can contact within like four, seven to 14 days and you can get either a refund or a replacement, something like that. But I'll show you how to do that. You would also need to find a mock-up for this too. First off, this would basically be our main thumbnail. And we'll use black on sand. Can use white on sand too, but I'm, I mainly recommend using black as it's clearer. So there we are. Then we want to change the opacity to about 80 JPEG. Download done. And then we want another type of um, mock-up here. We can use this one. And then we want to add something like this. 
you can either have it like here and then display let's use another type of color something like this and we press t for text element and then we can display the text here or we can basically also do it like this here so we, then we'll just put guarantee here and obviously we, we need to stylize this more to make it look a bit more professional uh, it was then just say if you're Just contact us within 7 to 14 days and we'll happily give you a refund. And just use something like this for uh, to offset risk from the customer if you're a new seller. This also increases conversion rate if you're a more seasoned seller. And then the more important thing here is that we also display the design on top of the shirt here too so we remind them that how it looks like what the dream outcome so to speak so there we go and then the third image would be the size chart that you already purchased and that we already have now we gotta publish it to etsy so a lot of people they basically just go to printify they add a template and then they push it to etsy i don't recommend doing that uh, if it's a f your first one you can definitely do that but the easy way in my opinion to do it is to just go into a listing here that you already have Press this one and then press copy. And then just change the SEO so it's correct. Then you just basically add the images that you have. And then the third one would obviously be like the size chart. But if you're starting out, just let's just use these three images just to get going as it's so important to just get going and not get hold up in the planning stage. And then for the SEO, we would basically use, let's see here. This is how I always do it. We don't want to use everything here. Cozy weather sweatshirt, a trendy sweatshirt, cute false weather. So we have a good starting point. Uh, and then we just use coffee here. See what pops up in the search bar. The search bar is always honestly like the best way to do to go about this. Let's see if coffee sweater. Coffee sweater has some hits. Let's use that. We don't sell a t-shirt, but maybe, maybe we can use coffee lover sweatshirt. And then I always want to fill out the title as much as possible as everything is search based. So let's see here. Coffee, maybe crew neck. Yep, that works too. And then one more coffee lover or something. Yeah, maybe just coffee lover. So like something like that. There is our title. And for our tags, it's really, really simple. Uh, again, I, I will always want to keep this as simple as possible because people usually just type out what they want in the search bar and it's usually not like super high tech. So just keep it simple. Gift. Yeah, coffee lover gift works. And then coffee lover gifts, probably. Coffee. Hmm. Crew neck. And then we can always also always get inspiration from the listing itself. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, um. We never want to use something like this trendy sweatshirt or gift for Christmas or gift for her, as these are such broad terms and we will almost never get ranked for them. I would always be much more precise with the actual thing that I'm trying to target. So um, even sweater, sweater, sweater weather is too too broad in my opinion. If I don't find any, then I can just use this coffee sweatshirts. So plural and then coffee crew necks, coffee sweaters. And there we go. That's our tags. And that's basically how you do it. That's how you list it on Etsy as well. Now, one of the main things to actually get sales on listing is to get rank initially. So what I would list this item at since the guild on 18,000, it costs about let's see here about 22 dollars i think by monster digital i always count on a print five premium price as that's a no-brainer if you're taking this seriously and want to really make this happen at least that's my opinion as the margins are hugely different hugely different if you're not a printify premium subscriber 849 in shipping so the cost is 22.4 dollars 22.4 i would basically list this at 29 dollars the reason for that is I call this a break-even pricing strategy. We want some buffer so we don't go into the red, 
but we don't make any real profit with this. And the reason for that is that the lower price, generally the more volume you do. The higher price, generally the less sales you do, but more profit you make. So you list it at this price until it hits about 10 to 15 sales or a 50% visibility score on FAB. And I'll show you what this is here. If we go into, for instance, <clears throat> this listing again, then you have this visibility score here. That is, uh, <clears throat> if this basically says 50% or more, then you can also push it to profit pricing. Either it gets 10 to 15 sales or this visibility score here says 50%, then you can push it to the pricing where it has the margins that you want. And I always wanna go to 30 to, 40, to a margin about 30 to 40%. So maybe like $39 is a great margin to have instead. So once it hit those metrics, I would basically push it to this pricing instead. But apart from that, I, was, I would also really use Etsy ads when I list the item to make sure that it has the most exposure as possible. It's just a toggle on. If you just toggle it on, then it's basically pushed on ads. For the nitty gritty about ads, you can watch this video right here. But basically you push it and once you have spent about $10 on that specific listing, if it has met your break even ROAS, you would basically just keep it on. If it hasn't, I would just t take the ad off and then just continue design and just go to the next design and listing itself and try that one out. We're not always gonna hit it right off the bat with every design that we make. We always gotta test things out to find our winners basically. To not make this video too long, I didn't go into every single detail when it comes to design. But in all due honesty, design is the most crucial part of a print on demand. And if you wanna learn more about that, then I suggest watching this video right here. Anyhow. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.